Hello guys, welcome to my channel How to Learn. In this video, I want to explain about JN5 plus market of crash course. Okay. Before starting my tutorial, I want to explain you few things. Okay. First of all, let me introduce myself. I am Anil and I am a Java developer with three years of experience. I have written nearly more than 500 test cases using the JN5 and Mockito. By using my experience, I have designed this tutorial. Okay. It means, uh, as I said before, it is a crash course. We are not going to discuss everything in detail. Okay. We are going to discuss the things which are mostly used in the real time. Okay. I am sure that by end of the tutorial, we are able to write 90% of the test cases using the JN5 and Mockito. Okay. I mean, the 90% means you, you can cover 90% of the scenarios. Okay. And uh, I'm not going to start Mockito directly, guys. First of all, I want to explain you JN5 because it is a basic one, right? If you guys know JN5, you can forward my video for a few seconds or few minutes. So you can start from the Mockito. But first of all, let me give you some quick overview about the JN5 and what are the assert statements and what are the annotations are there in the JN5 and how it works. Okay, let's start. What is unit testing? It is a type of software testing where individual units or components of software are tested. Unit test cases are written by developers during development phase. The reason we write the unit test cases is we can fix the bugs in development stage with help of unit testing. Okay. And the best example for the unit testing framework is JNUT. We have many frameworks, but till the still JNUT is the best one, guys for uh, doing the unit testing okay and what are the test case test case is a single set of instruction for a tester to validate specific functionality and what is jnut5 in jnut we have different versions of uh, jnut is released okay jnut is released in different version and the jnut5 is the latest version of the jnut which introduce new features which will play key role in writing test cases effectively and remember one thing guys, we have to install J Java 8, otherwise Gen 5 will be not supported in our machine. Okay, if your uh, machine don't contain Java 8, you can check my description. I have given some description for how to install Java 8. So you can check my video and you can install Java 8 and then you can start. Let's discuss about the Gen 5 architecture. I am not going to discuss about this uh, very deep. Let me give you some quick overview. In JN5 architecture, okay, we have three parts, JN platform, Jupyter and Windows. And if it's come to platform, it serves as function for launching test frameworks on JVM and it provides API to launch test from either console or IDs like Eclipse, Intel, etc. What is JN Jupyter? It is a combination of new programming model and extension model for writing test and extensions in JN5. What is this JN Windows? It is a testing name for running JN3,4 based test on platform which ensures backward compatibility. Okay. First of all, before starting with this annotation and assert statement, I am going to show you how to create a unit test. Okay. Let me create some sample test class. If you observe, it is a source test package. I have given a right click and you can say something like other and select J unit test case and click on next. You can check here. It's asking to select which version of J unit we want. Three, four are new J unit Jupyter test. Here we are not calling it J unit five guys. We are going to call it new J unit Jupyter test. Okay. And let's give some name like test. Okay. Now what J unit test class is created okay guys i hope you guys understood and how to run the test cases we have to give a right click inside it and you can run as the jnut test and i will show you how to run the specific test case only assert equals i'm going to explain it clearly once I started with annotations guys, leave it up to know what is this asset equals and all. For running any test case, we have to specify the rate test annotation. Okay, this test case. Okay. 
now we are able to run single test case suppose if we want to run complete test cases we can just give a, a click on somewhere okay and some at some place and you can just click on run as jnu test okay then you can run whole test cases okay and uh, suppose we want to check coverage okay coverage is nothing but number of lines covered by writing the test cases compared to the number of lines existing in the code okay now let's go back to the tutorial okay now we are done with at the red test annotation right it is for just recognition of JNU, recognition for JNU that it is a test case. Okay, now you got some basic idea, right? What is test case and how to create a test class of different versions and how to create a test case, how to run whole test class and how to run the particular test case. Okay, and uh, let's start with other annotations. If it's come to the other a test factory, it denotes a method that a test factory for dynamic test. Okay, it's not mostly used in uh, real time guys, so I don't want to explain it. And if it's come to the other a nested, it denotes that the annotated, annotated class is nested and it is a non static test class. Even we are not going to use this mostly in the real time. So let's ignore these two annotations, okay, and explain you other annotations. What is this other a display name? It defines that a custom display name for test class or test method. Suppose if you observe here, when I am running the test case, I am getting the name as test1, right? If I want to get some custom name, what I want to do? I want to use this other display name annotation. Let's run our test cases now. And you can check here we have the name allowed to learn to the test case test1. Like that it works. And what? And if it's come to a the rate extend suite, it registers custom ex extensions guys. Usually how it works means I will show you. Suppose I want to use something like a the rate extend suite and suppose I want to use Mockito JNU runner, right? I can just extend, use the extend annotation and start using this Mockito JNU runner, the class annotations, okay? and uh, here i don't want to explain you completely i will show you it in mockito how it works and what is this mockito jnu runner what is the use of the rate extend with it is the one of the most important annotations guys okay when i start with mockito i will explain you with examples in mockito also so you can clearly understand what is this the rate before is it denotes that annotator method will be executed before each test method and after each denotes that that the annotated method will be executed after every test method okay let's try to finish these two annotations at the time at the rate before it public void check okay let's uh, test it using sysout let's try to print my name here so here how many test cases we have two right it means my name to be printed for two times let's check whether it is printing or not yeah if you observe it is printing okay and let's check our after each method check and let's import it let's try to run it now you can observe the outputs here okay and it is printed before this uh, test case started executing and check is printed after this test cases got executed okay like that the before each and after each works if it's come to before all and after all, how they works means at the rate before all denotes that the annotated method will be executed before all test methods in the current class are executed. And after all is opposite to the before all. It will be executed after all test methods in the current class are executed. Let's try to, uh, let me try to explain that one also, these two annotations guys. 
okay after all and before all but for using this annotations we have to use it on only static methods guys let's try to run it now you can check and you'll uncheck for the two one one time okay one time it's because anil is executed like anil is printed before uh, the class uh, executed all the test cases and check is executed after once all the test cases test cases in the class are executed okay like that it works okay this method will be executed before all test cases are executed and this method is executed after all test cases are executed like that it works but in real time mostly you are going to use only at the rate before each method okay and here if it's come to at the rate disable suppose i want to ignore some test case while running we will use this at the rate disable annotation Let's try to run the uh, run the test cases. Let's check. If you observe here, we are only getting one test case run because one is uh, one is skipped, guys. You can check the mark here, okay? And here also it's saying like one skip. It means one test case is skipped, and uh, JNet is able to run only one test case. But in real time, we are going to use some annotations mostly, okay? That are at the red test, at the red extend width, and before each, that's it, guys. Mostly we are going to use these annotations in real time. And what are these JNOT assertions? Assertions are used to validate a test whether it is passed or failed. JNOT Jupyter annotations are kept in assertions class. Okay, and all of the methods here are static. Let's start executing all the methods one by one. Okay. Now let's clear this up to now. Let's try to delete these things. So it will be good for us when we're checking the logs and everything. Okay, if it's come to let's start with the SRT equals. Okay. It will check whether the expected and actual results are same or not. Okay and i have already run it before suppose the result is not same it will be failed you can check it here yeah see here it is expecting one but the result is zero okay which come to asset not equals it fails when expected result equal to actual results okay it's the opposite of asset equals guys Suppose we have two ones here. Let's try to run it. Now we'll get the result. Okay. Here it is saying like expected not equal. Right. So what we want to do means we want to give some unequal result. So it will be passed. Okay. If we give the same uh, result then it will be fail like uh, if you are expecting one and if you got the one here that test case will be failed and if it's come to assert true it fails if the expression is not true and if it's come to assert false it fail when expression is not false okay let's check it one by one let's give some true here okay you can check now the result is true so it passed okay if it is false it will fail guys now let's check for asset fail sorry asset false and let's try to give false here Up to now, I'm just giving it, uh, checking it locally by guys. But when I started Mockito, I will start testing with the code. Here I, I have already written some code, so we can uh, test these scenarios by using the code. Up to now, just as I was teaching you some basics, I was just uh, keeping it very easy. 
and if result null it will be failed when actual result is not null okay and if it's come to assert not null it will be failed when the actual result is null and let's check it guys let's try to execute some test cases here for assert null and assert not null let's give some string and if it's come to assert null Let's give null here and let's try to run it. You can check it here. That as case is passing right. It means our as case. It means it's uh, this assert statement are true. Okay. And if it's come to assert all, what it will do means it will group many assertions and every assertion is executed even one or more of them is failed. Okay, let's uh, try to execute this example. Then I will explain so you can easily understand. You can check it here, guys. Here, the assert statement will be passed, but here it is failed, right? Because here it is expecting null, but it is the result is not null, right? But again, here, if it's come to here, this assert statement will be passed. The reason of uh, using assert and uh, the reason of introduction of assert dal is suppose I will explain you some uh, other test case then you can clearly understand what I am saying. Okay, let me write some other test case public y test to asset false. Let's go true here and asset true. Let's go through here. Suppose if I have executed this test method, what it will say means the first one is failing, right? So what it will do means it will do not execute this second SS statement. Suppose for the, if the first SS statement is failed, then it will stop executing other SS statement below it. Okay, suppose the, let's assume there are three SS statement and the first one is passed and the second one is failed what it will do means it will stop executing the assertions from here only it will not go below but if it's come to assert all whatever happened suppose here you can observe the second test case is failed right i can say like a uh, second assert statement is failed but it still execute all the assert statement if it's come to here suppose the first assert statement is failed and it will stop executing other assert statements but if it's come to here it will execute all the assert statement whatever it may be it happened maybe all the assert statements are failed okay but it will execute every assert statement it will say everything is failed like that okay let me give you some example here so you can clearly understand and let's uh, remove it Let's try to run this. You can check here, it is saying two test, two SS statements are failures. Let's give false here and let's try to run it. Here, what it will say means it will show error for the first one only. It means once the first assert statement is failed, it's not executing from the second assert statement. But if it's come to assert all, it will execute all the assert statement. What are the result of the first or second assert statement? Okay, it don't depend on the uh, earlier assert statement result. Okay, it will execute all the assert statement. Okay, it is one of the important uh, assert statement, guys. If it's come to assert throws. How it works means suppose let's assume there is some method which gives exception okay if we want to test whether the exception scenario is working or not then we want to use this asset throws method let me explain you some basic example okay and here what i want to do means i want to throw exception from this method first of all let's declare that this method will throw exception and let's throw exception from here when the method is called
okay now i want to check whether when i'm calling the method whether it is throwing some exception or not how to check it by using this asset throws method okay now you can just do this exception dot class here and you can simply say comma and you can use some lambda expressions okay you can just call this test to method here let's try to run it this test case will be passed because here we are getting some exception right suppose let's uh, don't throw any exception guys let's check what is the result here let's run it again now if you check it the result will be and finally we are done with the jnfi guys and let's start with the mockito what is mockito mockito is a mocking framework which is used for effective unit testing and it will don't interact with the database okay it means there is no need of database connection for writing this test cases with Mockito. And compared to the other testing framework, Mockito is easier to learn and effective to test. And it will take very less time for execution of the test cases. It's the best framework and now in industry everyone is uh, using the Mockito only guys. Even if they are using some other framework, they are migrating to Mockito. Okay. And if it's come to some annotations, there are some couple of annotations which are used in Mockito, like at the red mark, at the red inject marks, at the red spy, at the red capture. But in real time, mostly we are going to use these two annotations only. Okay. Even there is use of this annotation, but uh, it's it's our wish to use or not. Okay. You, you can manage uh, our test cases using this these two annotations only okay these two are not much important okay but they are existing in the mockito if it's come to dependencies there is no need to add the mockito dependency externally in spring boot project because when we are creating the spring boot project we will get the spring boot starter added by default right in spring boot starter only we will have the jnfi dependency and the mockito dependency added by default so we don't need uh, we don't have any need to adding mockito dependency externally and from my experience, I have designed five scenarios of test cases. Mostly in our code, we will have the five scenarios of test cases. Okay. I will explain what are the five scenarios. And at the end of the tutorial, you can write 99% of the test scenarios for every method. Okay. The first scenario is how to test some method with return type. Okay. It means a method have some return type and how to test it. If it's come to our code let's check i have already created some code guys okay i have some employee controller and if you check it have some return type now i want to test it and some people will use mock mvc for writing uh, these test cases for controller but there is no mandatory rule that we want to use mock mvc guys okay and i hope you guys know how to create the test case because i have explained it in um, J unit file okay before that let me once refresh my id okay and let's start writing first of all when we started with writing our test case what you should do means you want to use either extend with annotation mockito j unit runner dot class sorry mockito extension dot class guys you have to use this extension okay i will show you why we are using this extensions when i return the test case okay and up to now i can simply say like it is for keeping our test class clean okay for keeping our test class clean it will remove unnecessary steppings in our test classes okay i will show you example while i am writing the test case so you can clearly get it and suppose now i want to write test case for this employee controller right so i want to create some test instance so what i want to do whenever i want to create some test instance i want to use some other inject marks above that uh, reference of test instance okay it means when suppose you are you want to test employee service 
so we want to create employee service reference and you have to put other rate inject marks about that reference okay if you put the inject marks at the rate above some controller or service any class it means you are going to test that class okay now we have some other annotation at the rate mark okay for every class we have some dependencies right it means in from controller we are going to interact with service from service we are going to interact with dav now we are going to test controller right so we want to take control of the employee service now if i use this at the rate mock annotations above the employee service now it is in our control it means if you give some commands it will await okay i will show you when i was when i was starting with writing the test cases okay and we have other method like before each okay the reason we are using this before each method is normally we have some we have to return some employee object or some person object something like that right and we can put that objects here we can initialize them here and we get uh, we can uh, centralize the code to be here suppose i want to test some four methods and if all the four methods have the same written type employee so i can create some reference employee employee and i can initialize it here so it will be a common reference for all the test cases in that way we can uh, use only one reference for all the test cases by keeping it in setup method okay even we already know right if we are using the other rate right before each method what it will do it will be call every time whenever uh, the test case is run it means it will employee reference will be initialized every time before running the test case okay here what we want to do means we want to add some mock it annotations dot open mocks what this will do means it will initialize all the fields which are annotated with mock it annotations okay it is one of the man this this setup is the mandatory as we have to extend with inject mock mock and mock it annotation dot open mock of this now let's start with writing our test case as we discussed before we want to go with this hello method let's start creating test case for this hello method okay and now what i should do first of as i have con to control this employee service by using mock annotations so what i want to do means i want to use some mock dot when method while testing it okay let's start using this mock it dot when method what it will do means whenever the particular method is called it will return the output which we are writing here okay i will show you when i was i am executing this code you can easily understand now you can check i am saying whenever employee service that return boolean method is called return true then it will return true only it will not return anything okay if you observe we have some response entity as the return type so for validating what i want to do means let's result equal to let me call employee controller dot by giving some uh, demo id okay now let's validate this code result dot get status code as i want to validate the result i should expect some result right let's expect some http status dot sorry guys let's uh, put some comma for this so it will not be disturbed okay and if you observe here we'll get you, you should get that http status dot okay when uh, it is returning this like uh, whenever here we get true okay it means here we have a method called right 
it means it is returning some boolean return if true it should return this like that it is saying so we have done that same right when now the method is called we are returning true and now we are expecting the result uh, here like the status of the expected results to be http status dot okay let's try to run our code once our test case once okay let's yeah now you can check it here it is we, we tested that particular functionality suppose we may get it out how to check whether the particular code is covered or not you can use some coverage option to check whether we uh, covered that particular scenario or not okay now let's wait for a few seconds guys yeah you can check it here right we are having red color lines yellow color line and green color line okay it green color line means we covered our code completely yellow color line means we covered our code uh, code partially it means now we just try the true condition but we not try the false condition right like that so it is showing in yellow color red color means we not check this scenario now i will show you how to check the false scenario okay for method with return type let's give false here now if you observe here the, uh, they are expecting some forbidden as status code right let's replace it with forbidden and let's run the both things by using the coverage option okay now let's check whether the code is covered or not Let's wait for a few seconds, guys. Yeah, if you observe, we cover the both scenarios of the test cases. So the yellow one, the partial one, turned into green color. It's saying all two branches covered. It means two branches means we have the if else uh, in if condition or else condition, right? It means in if it may be true, it may be false. Initially we covered only one scenario. Now we cover two scenarios, so it is giving some green color. It means now we completely tested this code snippet. Okay, now I think so. You guys understand how we are testing some method with return type, right? And now I want to explain you the use of at the rate extend with annotation. Okay, with extension mock it extension dot class. Okay, let's assume I have called some unused method from service from here. Let's assume I have accidentally called this method. Okay, this is some delete method. There is no use of this particular mock uh, dot when method like I am just trying to control this delete method from here but there is no use uh, using this thing in the hello one method okay but let's assume I have accidentally called it let's try to run as jnu test okay now you can observe the test case is executed successfully right now let's try to comment it and let's try to run the test case again uncommented sorry you can observe like it's detecting some unnecessary stubbing it means it is keeping our code very clean okay it is keeping our test cases very clean so it is very 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 important okay guys and uh, let's assume you are um, going we have some code freeze in our code and your manager said you to resolve some issues like that okay let's assume a scenario up to now we have written 100 of test cases now suddenly one of your senior architect or someone recommended to add this annotation suddenly okay at the rate extend with mock text in dot class okay now if you run this and uh, you get some unnecessary stubbing exception they will get some bad impression on you okay but still i have some suggestion for you if you want to manage it it's a bad way but still i am uh, i want to show you you can use some method like mockito dot lenient okay it's a bad way guys please don't do it but i just want to give some tip that's it okay Let's try to save it and let's try to run the coverage here. I mean, let's try to run the test case. 
now you can check it is uh, ignoring that error okay what it will do means it will uh, just not show the unnecessary stubbing error if you use this mockito.lenient but uh, never use that it's a bad practice and other thing is like now you may get the doubt like why i'm using something like any here what is the use of this i can simply say like these are the argument matches guys okay if you observe this method here we have some input parameter right here it is integer okay usually i should use any int it is a good practice okay suppose i am uh, trying to mock some method and if if it have some uh, input parameter as integer i have to use something like any int if i have some input parameter as in any string a string i have to use some any string okay it means whenever we pass an any argument it will uh, return false okay like that it works but if you uh, if you are somewhat lazy you can use any annotation like sorry any method okay but it's uh, the best practice is to use any int only okay like okay there is no issue if you are using any but it's the best practice okay guys now i will give you some other tip now we observe i am trying to use mockito dot when mockito dot when every time but if you add some static imports for mockito you can um, easily use that methods directly okay if you add this both annotate like imports static imports here let's add it here and maybe i have already added for the asset now even if i remove this mockito we can directly use this van method guys okay if you add the static imports you can directly use the van method okay guys by using the static imports we can uh, somewhat we can simplify our writing uh, test cases okay and i think so we are done with the first scenario okay even if you are if you want to get all the definitions you can re refer my blog now i want to test some methods without return type now if you you observe how to check how to test some method with return type but how do you check some method with no return type i will uh, explain guys no issues let me remove them for some readability okay if our test class don't have any test cases it would be somewhat clean okay and let's try to pick up some method with uh, no return type yeah if you check here we don't have any return type for this method okay it means the use uh, the developer don't want to check the return type okay he was just trying to print some loggers but we want to check right we cannot verify the result but at least we want to verify that call have performed or not okay that call was done or not how to do it i will explain you okay and now what i want to do means i want to use something like mockito dot verify okay and let's try to use that mockito dot verify employee service dot okay and there is some there should be something like times um i forgot the syntax guys let's refer our code once yeah it's the code yeah sorry guys i forgot the syntax Okay, change employee service here. What I want to do means first of all I want to call this exist by ID method which giving some uh, random ID. Okay, and what is this verify method? You may get it out. It means it is trying to verify whether the check employee method in employee service is called or not. Okay, what it will do means here we are specifying. to check how many times it should be called when i run this test case 
okay it means whenever i run this method automatically the call will go to service right so what we are doing we are trying to verify service call was done or not okay like that it works even you can check how many times uh, the method should be called suppose let's put it two times and let's try to run it it will give some exception let's check it yeah it's saying wanted two times but it invoked only for one time okay like that it works i hope you guys now got some scenario for how to check some method uh, with some wide return type it means with no return type how to check exception scenarios normally every code uh, in java will get some exceptions right how to check whether the particular exception scenario is working fine or not i will explain you guys okay even i already written some code which will return some exceptions so you can clearly get it and if we go to our code and clearly observe we'll have some methods right which will throw exception it means uh, if the if you give some idea and if, if not return the boolean value it will throw some exception now we want to cover it okay actually we have some asset throws method to check whether an exception scenario is working or not even i have showed you in the jnunit but still i want to show it here as we all know that in spring boot we are we are also having the custom exception i will show you that scenario also okay now we have to check for this right let's replace the method name here and let's try to mock employee service method dot check existing employee yeah it's existing employee and let's give any int here as the input parameter is any integer then let's try to return false because we'll get exception when uh, we got a false scenario only okay and now let's i want to check whether it will that, that exception scenario is working or not so i want to use some assert throws method okay i can use something like exception dot class and let me try to call controller from here employee controller dot verify let's give some random id okay and let's put some semicolon here let's try to run the test case if you observe the test case will be successfully executed and let's try to check the coverage so you can observe whether the scenario is covered or not okay when now you try to uh, stick some test case i uh, will suggest you to run this coverage only guys so you can easily check whether the scenario is covered or not you can observe it here now with this particular scenario is covered right it means our exceptions are working fine as i said before in spring boot we have some custom exception scenarios right we can use some custom exceptions here so i want to check whether my custom exception is working fine or not okay let's go to employee controller and if you observe here we have something like verify id method okay don't uh, compare the logic guys just for that writing test cases i have uh, written some random logic okay and if it's come to employee service okay uh, let's i don't want to make any call here okay up to now here let's we don't have any call okay what i can do means i can just copy this exception and when i try to call this verify id method let's give some id other than one because if i give one it will throw some normal exception if i give some id other than one it will uh, try to uh, throw some custom exception right let's try to cover uh, run uh, like uh, let's try to run the coverage so you can clearly understand whether the scenario is covered or not okay let's check it here let's wait yeah observe now we observe 
now our custom exception scenario is also got covered okay i hope now you guys got some idea like how to check some method with return type how to check some method with no return type how to check some method with exception scenario and some custom exception scenario okay now now guys we have a final scenario how to test static method it's not like uh, testing non static method we have to add some mockito inline dependency into our pom.xml if you want to test static method in our code okay i have already written some uh, static methods here if you observe it our employee service i have written some boolean check it method okay some check it method with return type boolean which is static so now i want to verify the static method okay i have already added pom.xml uh, like mockito inline in pom.xml let me show you that okay you can check it here I have already added mockito inline the reason i am not added the version is spring boot will uh, spring boot starter will automatically organize it okay guys and let me add some code snippet which will test this static method okay here what we are doing we are just trying to mock this employee service interface and we want to initialize it to this utilities mock static reference okay and we are just trying to return some false whenever this method is calling okay getting call okay let me try to run the coverage here and i will show you whether the particular scenario is covered or not if you observe here we got the employee service it is returning true okay but whenever it it, it, uh, it, return, it returns true it want to call the uh, it want to return the up string right string up but here if you observe the green lines are there for only down okay it means it is uh, returning false from the static uh, method check it and here we are getting the output as the down okay you can check it here we are trying to validate the output we are getting string down when we are trying to call this help check method okay i think so now you guys got some idea how to check the static method also now i have covered everything guys but if you want to go through some definitions or some uh, extra theory part okay for this mock annotation inject mock mock and everything i have explained them detailedly in the blog only you i will paste this article in description you can also check it and other thing is like usually i am trying to run the coverage right i can i am getting the coverage option by default but in spring tools it will not get the coverage option by default okay if we want to check it we want to add some plugin here i will i had already made made a video how to add that plugin to our spring tools i will also paste that video link in the description if you want to run coverage you can utilize that video guys okay and we are done with our gen5 with mockito tutorial if you have any queries please comment it in comment section thank you for watching my video please like and subscribe my channel